Hi everyone, so I'm Guy, and I develop iOS libraries for developers. So you might be wondering, why am I bringing up the subject of our old friend Objective-C at the Swift conference? So let me tell you why you should care. In a report submitted by GitHub over the last year, they showed the number of pull requests for each programming language. We see that both Swift and Objective-C have quite a similar close number of 100k to 70k. Another interesting report is the one submitted by Stack Overflow Developer Survey, which showed the usage of the programming languages that developers use. So we see that both Objective-C and Swift is used by 6.5%, which means there's the same number of developers there. So now, as some of you know, when you write your code base in Objective-C, it is directly accessible in Swift. The magic falls short when you're writing your, your Swift code base and then you're trying to access it in Objective-C. And that's true for the main features that we love and cherish about Swift, such as generics, enums, and structs. And that's the main reason why you moved to Swift in the first place. So if you want to cater for all those Objective-C developers, what can you do about them? So let's see how we can go over those troubled water and support them. So first and foremost, Make sure to write your code base and the core of your code base in Swift, and then write supporting Swift code to support those Objective-C developers. So let's take an example of an Objective-C fallback. You have a variable called length. It has a type integer optional. This type is not bridgeable through Objective-C. So what we can go ahead and do is write the supporting property. This property has at Objective-C length, which is the name of the variable that is accessed in your Objective-C code base. You use then a type NS number, which is actually bridgeable to Objective-C. You name it in such a way Z Objective-C length. And the reason for that is because this property is actually in your safe code base, and you don't want it to appear when you're actually typing a variable. So you prepend it with a Z so that it appears at the end of the autocomplete. Finally, you can see that the getter and setter of the property is using self.length at its own source of truth. A second tip that I'd like to give you is to write Objective-C unit test to test those Swift functions that you want to make available to your Objective-C developers in your library. So in that way, you can directly detect if a function is not bridgeable to Objective-C or if there are crashes or some bugs in there. A final tip that I want to give you is to actually use a linter rule. So a linter's job is to analyze your code base so that it can detect programmatic or stylistic errors. And so you can create a linter rule so, so that it can raise warnings when it detects that a certain protocol, class, or method is not actually bridgeable to Objective-C. So let me end by saying one thing. Don't forget your Objective-C friend, and make sure to use some of the tips above to get started in catering for them. Thank you.